Greetings, Preacher Rick with you with another gospel message from the Word of God. Live at 5 today and glad to share the Word of God this Thanksgiving Eve 2020. And I know there's a lot of things going on in a lot of people's lives today. But we just trust the Lord. He changes not. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And that's what we must do. Dangers of the old tongue. You know, the old tongue is more dangerous than any other part of your body. You realize that? I'd like to read to you a little bit of scripture out of the uh, third chapter of James. Uh, and it, it talks about that. It says, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same as a perfect man. So if you can tame that tongue where it doesn't offend anybody, God says you're a perfect person, and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us. I used to have a pony when I was young. Yes, we'd, when you wanted to ride it, you had to put a bridle on. It has a bit that goes in their mouth, and when you turn that bit, they knew what it meant, and that's how they obey. And we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships. Think of how small that little thing is on the bottom of a ship that turns it. That great big old ship. Behold also the ships, which, though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so the tongue is a little member. Boy, it is, isn't it? Very small. And boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity, a world of many, many sins. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire, and you're not going to... If you've never read this, you're not going to believe where it's set on fire from. And it is set on fire of hell. This is Bible. We're reading in James, the third chapter. Verse 7 says, For every kind of beast and of bird and of serpent and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the feed tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either of vine, figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh so i realized that was a good bit of reading but it, all, every bit of it had to be read because it all was in the same uh, absolute same theme whatsoever uh, all together one topic that topic is how unruly these old tongues are and how much damage they can do the tongue is can be very evil we must be very careful how we use the tongue that god has given us now, in Psalms 19, well, Psalms, uh, yeah, Psalms, I'll, I'll go to Matthew first. Matthew 15, 11 reads like this. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, that defileth a man. So, people worry about what they eat and uh, all that kind of stuff. And, uh, boy, there's a million diets in the world, isn't there? But it's not what a person eats that defiles a person. It's, it's not what goes in the mouth that defiles a person. It's what comes out of the mouth that defiles a person. Uh, and so we need to understand that it's, we have a grave responsibility of choosing our words wisely. And there's a lot of scripture I could turn to, and uh, time won't allow it, but I will turn over to, uh, as I started to say a minute ago, it's Psalms 19:14, and it reads like this. And 
Let the words of my mouth, the psalmist said to God, and this should be our prayer. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Bless God forever. Well, let us pray. Most kind and gracious Father, may your word penetrate the hearts of the, the lost. May it encourage your children. And may everything we say and do be for thy glory. Bless your word. You anoint these lips of plants in the preacher one more time, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. The old tongue, uh, uh, with the tongue we bless and with the tongue we curse. Uh, and, and I thought, uh, as I was reading that, I thought how true that is, how much damage can be done uh, by a tongue. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, there's an old saying I used to hear, and I'm sure all of you have heard it too, uh, when I was a kid. Uh, it said, uh, sticks and stones may broke break my bones but words will never hurt me uh, well that little saying is completely false uh, uh, I, I tell you I've been uh, hurt with sticks and stones uh, uh, down through the years and you probably have too uh, uh, but I but I've been hurt much worse with words uh, uh, since I've been saved especially but all through my life uh, uh, people can really hurt you with words uh, uh, they can say things that will give you a complex when you're little uh, that will never go away. Somebody can uh, uh, call you uh, uh, some name or make fun of uh, the shape of your body uh, in some way when you're a kid, uh, and it can build a complex in you uh, uh, that Satan will use against you and keep you uh, from doing the work of God if he can, uh, uh, because words will hurt you, uh, and we must be aware of that at all time. Uh, that uh, Words are very powerful, uh, and they do a lot of damage to people. People can hurt your feelings. Uh, uh, by saying things about your family or about you or cursing you, uh, uh, and, and they can hurt you. And uh, uh, there's a lot of timid people out there uh, uh, that get hurt, and they just don't know how to deal with that pain. Uh, pain's not always easy to deal with, especially uh, mental anguish uh, uh, like that. Uh, and complexes are real. Don't you ever doubt it. Uh, uh, Satan wants you to have every complex in the world, anything he can do to keep you from testifying for the Lord, uh, anything he can do uh, uh, to keep you for singing for the Lord, uh, anything he can do to keep you for preaching for the Lord, uh, uh, he'll do it because maybe something someone said to you along the way. Uh, and then there's a uh, uh, people that, that don't mean to hurt you, but uh, uh, they say things uh, that do hurt you. And uh, that's why we as Christians uh, need to choose our words wisely and carefully. Uh, uh, you know, there's another old saying, we put our foot in our mouth. Uh, what that means is uh, uh, you stretch your mouth way out of shape uh, and you said things you shouldn't say. Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, and you maybe didn't mean to, but uh, there's no taking them back once they're out uh, uh, and they can cause a lot of damage. Uh, uh, you can cause damage to the gospel. You can cause damage to the church. Uh, I've had people tell lies on me since I got saved uh, uh, that damaged my ministry. Uh, things that were not, not true whatsoever. Uh, I'll share one with you. Uh, you might find it a little humorous, but I'll tell you, when it happened, there was nothing humorous about it. Uh, and I believe to this day it still caused damage to the ministry that God would have me to use. Uh, uh, but I remember as Teresa uh, uh, was getting a, a little older, uh, and we all get a little older. We've been married many years, my wife and I. Uh, I can remember she when I married her as a little teenager, uh, she was a little brunette. But when her hair uh, uh, started to change as she got older, she decided to put a little bit of dye on it, and uh, she became a blonde for the first time in her life. Uh, and what do you think uh, uh, some people said? They said, well, I was with another woman uh, because I was with a blonde. Uh, well, see, uh, uh, they may have thought that, but there was no truth to that. Uh, now, I'm not going to go too deep into that, uh, but you think that uh, the devil didn't run with that and make people believe a lie? Uh, uh, listen, there's a lot of lies out there, and you have to be really careful with words you use. You can uh, you can kill uh, uh, one of God's ministers just with your tongue. Uh, uh, you can stop them dead in their tracks, uh, uh, and that's exactly what Satan will do 
if he can uh, possibly do it. Uh, uh, I've had, I've been, uh, as the old saying is, shot out of the saddle several times since I've been saved uh, and a minister for the Lord. Uh, when you get on the front lines, uh, you'll find that those things happen. But that's not the uh, uh, actual uh, sermon today. The sermon is the words that came out of the mouth that caused it. Uh, you have to uh, be aware that people will say things about you that are not true. Uh, uh, the, the Bible teaches uh, uh, that uh, people will come against you, and Jesus told us they would hate us. Uh, they hated him first. Uh, uh, so I kind of uh, expect, and, uh, and it does comfort me to know what the Bible says. It says, woe unto the man that everyone speaks well of. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, when people do speak bad about you, uh, it just confirms the fact that maybe you're doing something right. Uh, uh, I found that the closer you get to the front lines, the more uh, of the enemy fire is going to be shot at you. That's just the way it is. Uh, uh, but but it's that tongue, uh, that tongue that causes so much damage to all of us. We must be very careful. Out of the same fountain, you'll not get sweet water and salt water. Fresh water and salt water will not come out of the same fountain. And we all know that we can't live on salt water. We must have fresh water to live. We need the water of the Word. And we need the Word of God to be forefront in our thoughts, in our life, and in all of our words. And there's a lot of scripture I could give you. I'm going to, I know it's time to close. I'm going to, I wrote down several verses. And I'm just, since this is recorded, and you can come back and get it anytime, that may be able to help you. But you should read uh, Proverbs 13 3, which I did. I think I did. Psalms 19 14, Matthew 15 11. Ephesians 4.29, Matthew 12.36 and 37, Proverbs 10, 19 and verse 31, Psalms 141 and 3, James 1, 19. And I hope it'll be a help to you. God bless you, beloved. I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. For those of you that are listening live tonight, uh, tomorrow's Thanksgiving uh, of this year, and it's going to be rough for a lot of people. Uh, but we love you all. And let me tell you, uh, Thanksgiving should be every day. God gave me a little song. And I won't sing the whole song, but here's how it goes. Years ago about Thanksgiving. Giving thanks to the Lord is such a delight. We can't do it enough if we thank Him day and night. When I think of all He's given me before, it makes me feel ashamed to even start to ask for more. I thank the Lord for Thanksgiving Day, a day we can all give our Father praise. It's a day to the world which comes once a year, but to the church it lasts every day that we're here. Amen. And I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. We love you all. Praying for you. This is Preacher Rick. Until the next time.